Hello everybody and welcome back. Today I'm going to be trying out a bunch of new products that have come my way. A couple of the standouts I'm going to be trying are the Shiseido new Synchro Skin Self Refreshing Tint. I also have the Huda Beauty Cherry Blossom Powder as well as their new blush sticks. I actually have quite a few blush options today so I'm going to be at war with myself in a bit here. I also have the new Dear Dahlia blushes that look absolutely beautiful. They're like a beautiful ombre sunset in a pan and I'm excited to try out this mascara here. It's surprisingly a squishy bottle. It's really fun to touch. But those are just a couple of the standouts. I have a bunch more products here to try as well. I think I have an almost full face of new stuff to try. I'm just missing a bronzer. So this is going to be fun. Some of the things are new to the market and some of them are of course just new to me. So before we get into it, I'd love for you to subscribe if you haven't already and let's get into it. So of course I'm going to be starting off with the Shiseido Synchro Skin Self Refreshing Tint. I just swatched both on my cheek and they're very, very invisible. They sent over the shades 225 and 215. I also swatched them on the back of my hand here. This one is 215 and this is 225. I think I'm going to be going in with 225 just because it warms up my skin a little bit and it's so so sheer that it's not going to look dark on me. I don't know if this is going to be enough coverage for what I was imagining, but we'll see. I'm going to try it out still. I think I'm going to start off by putting it on with my fingers. This is the little bottle. Look how cute the little tip is. It's so much skinnier than I was expecting. Here is the consistency. It's thicker. It's not very liquidy. Okay, I feel it thickening up as I'm rubbing it in. It does have a bit more coverage than I was expecting and it does have a decent amount for a tint. I'm going to go over that with this foundation brush because I put that on really loosely and I just want to take away the excess. Okay, immediately on, I'm not like immediately in love with it like I was with the Rose Ink Tinted Serum or anything like that. I'm not seeing anything very special with this. I don't know, I feel like it just looks pretty average on my skin. I don't really see any attributes that I'm like wowed by, I guess. I feel like it almost looks kind of texture enhancing like a little bit. Okay, we'll see how it wears and such, but I'm not immediately wowed. For my concealer, I am going to be using something I only used once so far. This is the KVD Good Apple Concealer. I have the shade Light 111. I have to force myself to try this out a couple more times if I want this to be included in this month's roundup, so I'm gonna take this opportunity to do so. But um, I have been really liking the Dior concealer as well as the, what is it, the LYS one that I've been testing out this month. I did forget how light this one was for my skin. I was kind of hoping I was going to be able to color correct. So I might go in with another concealer to kind of further correct areas I want to on my face because I just, I don't know if this Shiseido product is doing it for me. I'm really not liking my base. <laughs> okay, I'll show you an up close shot of what my skin is looking like. I hope you can see it right here, but it's like looking grainy on my, on my skin. And just things aren't looking like my skin should. Like my skin doesn't look like this. It's making my skin look textured and patchier than it actually is it's just grabbing onto things. I don't know. I might wipe this off and go in with a foundation I actually enjoy just to give the rest of the products here a good shot. Yeah, I don't like how anything's sitting on my face right now. That's annoying. Okay, I'm going to wipe this off and apply foundation I like and a concealer as well and I'll be right back. Okay, I just quickly slapped on a base that I actually like. I ended up going with the Makeup Forever HD Skin in the shade 1N10. I just used this shade alone. I didn't mix it in with another one. And then for my concealer, I went in with the Dior Forever Skin Correct in the shade 1.5 for my under eyes and I further corrected my face with 2N. I think a couple things went wrong here with the original base. So for this, I just don't think I was in the mood for a tinted base 
for one, but also I've tried so many skin tints over the course of this year. I feel like every brand is coming out with one. This one just didn't really feel special. I didn't really like its consistency. I feel like it was kind of rejecting my skin and it was sitting on top and kind of enhancing things I just don't want enhanced. And then for the concealer, I just, I don't know if this is made for me. Also, I think it's a shade way too light and then paired with something so sheer, it looked really odd. So I think that was just bad decisions on my end. I'm going to try this out once again with a couple different uh, approaches, I guess. Um, I might try it out with a brush or like with different skincare underneath. We'll see, I'll try to make it work and I'll update you guys another time. But for the concealer, I just, I don't like the way it looks under my eyes. But now let's move on to powder and I'm going to be trying out this one from Huda Beauty, it's the Cherry Blossom Powder. I've heard so much about this powder recently and I'm not too sure why, but I'm excited to maybe find out why. I've actually never tried any of her powders in general, I don't think, uh, her loose ones. I did try out the glowish one. I could never forget that experience. But it's super pink, as you can see. It's like dried, crushed up Pepto-Bismol. Oh my God, it's powdered perfume as well. Why did I? I think I just like inhaled it. <laughs> that was dumb. Going to take some on a nice fluffy brush to set under my eyes. This is definitely like a, a baking powder, but I don't really bake. Maybe I will just a little bit, but I'm going to set my under eyes like I usually would just so we can see what it'd be like in my everyday life. It's very blurring and it's not super pink under the eye. I actually like setting my under eyes with pink powders time to time, especially if I have some darkness going on. It tends to really counteract any discoloration down here and it also brightens it up really nicely. But that looks quite nice. I'm going to take some on my sponge, just a little bit, and I'm going to set right where I have those little lines. I used to do this all the time. I'm just gonna leave that on for a couple seconds. Super, super fragranced, but it's blurring and I feel like it did a good job at setting the way I usually do, but now I'm going to kind of flick this away or blend it in and let's examine. Wow, okay. That looks really, really nice under the eye. I want to see what it looks like on my forehead. Since I might be going in with some creams in a minute, I'm going to refrain from setting the center of my cheeks, but Let's see what it does to my forehead. I'll bring you guys in a little bit closer and scrunch down. I'm taking my Rare Beauty powder brush. Super blurring. Wow. Okay, I'm actually quite impressed with that. And it feels really, really silky. Wow, that's really nice. And I feel like it didn't dull out my skin. It's definitely mattifying, like it doesn't leave any glow behind whatsoever. But it, my skin doesn't look dehydrated or dull. That's impressive. I think the only thing I would complain about this is that it's very smelly. <laughs> it's very fragranced. Now to give some definition to my cheeks, I'm going to be using my Fenty Beauty Cheeks Out Freestyle Cream Bronzer in the shade Amber. And I'm using my little sculpt brush from Moda. And I'm going to be doing the technique I've been showing in quite a few of my videos recently, where I just hollow out my cheeks a little bit. I don't know if I'm going to be going in with bronzer today, so I'm going to leave it at this for a moment. And whatever's left on my brush, I like to take on my jaw just a little bit. So now for highlighter. I have these About Face highlighters that I'm really excited to try. I have the new shade extension and one shade from like the first launch, I believe. Or one of the first ones anyways. This is the liquid highlighters. And I'm going to be using the shade Shaken or Stirred. Um, but they also have some really, really fun colors too. Like this one stands out to me a lot. This shade Unrestrained. I've been wanting to incorporate this um, in one of my looks, but I don't know how. <laughs> it just hasn't been the right time yet. But this is Unrestrained. It's like a really cool purple. It has such a nice formula. It's very, very dewy looking. It's taken me a while to get into this brand. At first, like just seeing it online, it didn't really intrigue me for some reason, but now like after receiving some of the products and feeling the actual textures, they feel really, really well designed and they have a lot of thought to put into them, it feels like. Like this formula feels so silky. 
I'm excited to try it out. It's a really gorgeous golden shade as well. I'm going to try applying it with my fingertips on one side and the other I'll try it with my favorite brush. Wow, okay. That blended really, really quickly into my foundation. And that's a beautiful amount of glow as well. Now I'm going in with my Moda Pro Glow Brush on this side. A little bit of it goes a long way since it's so silky. Okay, I feel immediately like a fingertips better. I feel like this side made it look a little bit textured. I think it just sucked up too much of the moisture in it, so I would definitely keep applying this with a fingertip. Very beautiful. I like that quite a bit. That feels like really outstanding. Very impressed with how it looks on this side. This side got a little bit um, blown out, but this looks really, really nice and put together. Pretty! Now it's blush time and I actually have three options for today. I don't know what I was just doing with my hands there. I was like a little chicken foot. Anyways, um, I should have started to think about what I was going to do for my cheeks a little bit ago because these blushes all look beautiful and I want to try them all at the same time. So the first one I received here is one of Persona's new blush colors. This is Bubble. Look at that hot pink. Very, very pretty. I'll swatch it next to the Dior one. This pink one from Dior, the 001 pink. This is the Persona one here, so it's a bit punchier in color, and this is the Dior one. So they're similar, but this one just has a bit more pigment. I also have these Dear Dahlia blushes that look oh so beautiful, especially this one shade right here, Joy, but they're like a really pretty ombre. There's three of them here. So this one is happiness, the middle one is joy, and the last one is pleasure, which is like more of a nudie one. These are powder. I also have the new Huda Beauty cheeky tints, and there's five shades. And for the Huda Beauty ones, they look very dewy, but they also have uh, like a pearl included in there. So I got a lot of deciding to do. I don't know what I wanna do. Here are all of the Huda Beauty cheeky tints swatched. I think I'm going to go with this since I have a face ready for creams and I wasn't in the mood for powders just yet. So over here we have Perky Peach, this is Proud Pink, Coral Cutie, Rebel Red, Rebel Red right here, and Batty Berry. These two right here kind of make the most sense with what other shades I'm going to be going in with later. I feel like this will be too fresh for the other things I'm going to be going in with. I'm going to play it safe and go in with Perky Peach. These are also fragrance free. I'll include screenshots of the info cards they sent over so you can see all of the information. It also says here that you can mix, match, and layer the shades to create your own unique color. I'm excited to try that, but I think I'm going to just go in with one already made color just to see what it's like first, and then I'll get creative in another video. Um, so I'm going to be going in again with the shade Perky Peach. I'm going to apply it directly on my skin on one side and the other on my palm, then with a brush. Ooh, okay, that blended out beautifully. And the pearlescence in here isn't enhancing my texture. That looks gorgeous. Okay, I really like that color. Super easy to blend out that way. And now I'm going to take some in the palm, then I'm gonna go in with my brush. This will give you kind of a lighter application. These don't seem to be so overly pigmented like a lot of other Huda Beauty products, so I think it's more manageable just to apply it directly onto your cheeks. But if you want to keep it like more hygienic or whatever, you can do the palm trick because they look pretty much identical on both sides. That's a really nice, easy to work with, gorgeous looking blush. Wow, okay. I thought maybe the pearlescence that's in here was going to throw the product off, but nope, that looks really, really healthy. Pretty, okay, fun. <laughs> I'm excited to mix and match and try out some of these other colors now. I think the next one I wanna try is Coral Cutie. This one's so vibrant. Now it's time for me to pop off camera to do my brows and prime my lids, so please enjoy the brow intermission. I slept my brows on, but before moving on to eyes, I just wanna quickly set the center of my face with more of this powder. The smell is pretty, but it's, it's pretty intense. I'll bring you guys in so we can see this action. Uh, yeah, it doesn't feel quite tightening on my cheeks now that I'm feeling it. I might've put a little bit much in the center on that side. I feel it 
tightening up my cheek on this side. I did go in with two layers. I think one and you're done, but very nice. I like it for my forehead and my under eyes. I don't know if I like it for the center of my cheeks though. I know this is more of a under eye powder, but I like it for my forehead and my under eyes. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so now for my eyes, I'll zoom you guys out just a little bit for a moment. I wanna try these About Face Matte Glued Eye Paints and these fractal eye paints. Isn't this packaging fun? I thought that I had to like unwrap something, but this is the actual packaging. Like it's squishy right here. I think that's really cool. And it saves a lot of space. I'm going to start off with these two and then I might layer this one on top. Let me know if you wanna see a full face of about face, cause I think I have everything that they offer right now. So I'm first going to be going in with the shades Smell Before Rain, which is this nice kind of beigey color, and Cloned, which is like a nice brick brown. I'm going to dot some in my crease. Taking this Smith brush, I don't know which one it is right now, I'm just panicking that this might dry down quickly, but it doesn't feel like so. Okay, I can relax. It's a 230 brush. Okay, that's a very subtle transition shade. And now I'm going to go in with that second color before that one sets all the way. So hopefully we get a blend. And this is a Smith 235. Oh no, okay, okay. It's okay, everything's fine. Everything will be okay. Can you tell I've been scarred by liquid eyeshadows in the past before? <laughs> this is blending out really nicely. That blended out pretty similarly to a powder eyeshadow. I feel it drying down now, which gives a lot of playtime. Nice. Okay, now I'm going to be going in with this fractal eye paint in the shade Fracture. Let's give this a swatch first. Ooh, okay, this one is cool. I thought it was just going to be like a bronze shade, but it seems to have like green glitter in it. Hopefully it's picking up. But wow, I really like the way that looks. There's a couple different sizes of glitter in here. This is kind of giving me like a way more glittery version of Globe from Kosas. You know, it has like that unique something something to it. That is really pretty on its own. Okay, let's see what it looks like layered on top of what I have going on here. It really sticks down nicely. I went in with a little bit just to begin with. I just wanted to see how far this stuff stretches. And I'm going to build a little bit more in the center. Ooh, maybe I should put in the lighter shade too. This stuff is really easy to work with. All of the eye things I went in with so far. It's not what I was assuming, I guess. I shouldn't assume. <laughs> And now I'm going to put a little bit of Tin Pan Alley, which is a lighter color. Let's see what this one looks like by itself. Oh, this has like a, whoa, okay. This is a very different shift than I was expecting. I thought it was going to be more champagne-y, but it does have like a teal green reflect to it. Like it does have a different kind of look than this one, but I think that's just because it's lighter, but really, really, really pretty. Wow, this brand is so fun and funky. <laughs> But it's fun that they have like everyday shades as well, but it kind of spices it up a touch. Put that as my inner corner. I'm taking a baby brush. This is a Melt Cosmetics 523. And I just took some of the first shade I went in with in the matte paints, the after, the smell before rain shade. Um, and I'm going to put this in my, I was gonna put it in my waterline. What am I doing, hello? just on the lower lash line here. And I'll do the same with the darker color. I did stamp a little bit of the glitter down here, but it's all good, whatever. These are very interesting because they blend out just like a powder would. They even have that same kind of powdery matte look. I also have some funkier colors as well, which I'll reserve for the full face of About Face. I'm happy with that. I'm just going to repeat it on this eye and I'll be right back. Just because I'm having so much fun, I'm also going to incorporate this shade right here, which is weightless. It's like a really nice dark brown. I'm just going to take some on the back of my hand once again, using that same melt brush. I'm just going to deepen the outer corners further. I want to see how it layers as well. 
It dries quicker when you apply it already on an already dried layer. I wonder how these would be as a little eyeliner. I'll have to try that another day. I think you'll have to like layer it when they're still a little bit wet because that was a little bit tricky. Not bad. I, s I feel like it still looks quite good. I'm going to give my lashes a quick curl. So now I'm going to be trying out the new Milk Makeup Mascara. This is the Rise Mascara and it has a really interesting feeling packaging. I thought this was like gonna be like a rippled plastic, but it's actually like, what is this, like rubber feeling? It's really, really fun to touch and you have a really good grip opening it and such. I think this is supposed to be like a nice, more lengthening, subtly volumizing formula. I'll include the info card again for you guys so you can read all about it. So here is the wand. It's kind of curved. Okay. I think this is way more volumizing than I anticipated. It has quite a sticky formula, but it's following through my lashes quite well. It feels quicker to apply than um, their past mascara. I kind of like the way that's looking. It does have a grip like when you're applying it, but it's not clumping. One thing that I'm noticing though is that the whole, <laughs> oh my God, dirty references with mascaras always, but it's a little bit small. So you can see like a lot of the product from the brush like kind of squeegees off, like it doesn't go back in every time. So this is going to get super messy. Yeah, see? Cause there's always gonna be a little extra that doesn't go on your lashes. I feel like this one will have the tendency to clump up a lot quicker. I don't know if I like this as much as the Mac Stack mascara, but if I tried this one before the Mac Stack, I think I would have been really impressed. But the Mac Stack is really easy to apply. It's quicker than this one is, and the packaging is also really fun. I really like this packaging too, but I feel like it's gonna get real messy. See, like a bunch just scrapes off like that's quite a bit of product waste there. But here are my lashes. I think they look pretty good, but I don't know. I think I prefer the MAC stack if I'm really thinking about it, but I'm gonna continue trying this out. We'll see if this one smudges or flakes and there's always room for a couple good mascaras. So we'll see how this tests out for me. But now let's move on to lips now that the eyes are done. Uh, I'm going to be trying out some more about face stuff. I have their lip liners as well as a couple glosses and some of their matte liquid lipsticks, but I don't think I'm in the mood for this today. I think I'm going to be going in with this pretty gloss. It's the shade Double Clutch and one of these lip liners. Let's see. Ooh, these feel really silky. These are the four lip liners. I just quickly swatched them. So this one is Cradled, After Party, Smoking Room, and lost time. Damn, my hand is looking rough. I'll give Cradled a shot. Ooh, these feel very similarly to the Huda Beauty lip liners I really like. The, the ones that are retractable. It has that same amount of pigment and a very, very, it's very, very glidey and creamy. I really like that texture. That was super quick. Really pretty color as well. And now let's try out this Light Lock Lip Gloss in the shade, double clutch. Okay, not so glossy. A little bit glossy, of course, but I was expecting like a lacquered look. It's very subtle. I don't know if I'm a huge fan of that. I like the color. The texture feels nice, but I, I would like more shine from a gloss. And here is the finished outcome of this look. I think everything pulled together really nicely. All the tones look good together, so good planning on my end. <laughs> um, there's just a few things that went a little sideways, but all in all, I feel like everything looks really, really nice. So for the things I'm disappointed in, I'll just start off with them quickly. Of course, the complexion products I mentioned at the beginning, I, I won't repeat myself, but my thoughts still remain the same. I'll give these another shot. Everything deserves another shot, but 
first impression wise, especially for this, wasn't that great. And also I'm not super in love with this gloss. I think it has a good pigmentation. I just, I don't know if I'll really reach for it that often with all of the other glosses I have in my collection. That might change, but right now I'm not like super wowed by it. It feels nice, it has a good opacity. I just wish it was shinier. That's what's missing for me. So now let's talk about the other things that I was impressed by or that I really liked. So first off with the powder, I think this was really nice for under the eye. I like how it brightened it up down there, blurred it out, and I also really like how it looked on my forehead. I'm going to continue trying it out though, just to see if it like breaks me out or anything since it is very heavily fragranced. But first impression wise, really, really like it. And I do see the potential of this one entering my powder rotation because it was that nice immediately under the eyes. So we'll see how this one prolongs the longevity of my under eyes and areas I applied it. I think this might be my one, no, not my most favorite, but one of my favorite products I tried out today. This highlighter here, the About Face Light Lock Highlighting Fluid really impressed by this it was really beautiful to work with i still love how kind of subtle it is but it brings a lot of luminosity to my skin and it stands out in a subtle way i think it was really beautiful really easy to work with when working with my fingertips um i'll just have to remember that that it doesn't really go well with a brush or a sponge but fingertips is just really easy and it's it's sunk right in without disrupting anything. It's not glittery. It has a gorgeous, really dewy looking sheen, but it sticks down to your makeup. It doesn't feel sticky, it just grips. It's nice. Another product that I was really impressed by today was the Huda Beauty Cheeky Tint Blush Sticks. I'm usually kind of iffy with blush sticks, but this one feels really nice. It has a good amount of longevity, it looks like as well, because I've been filming for quite a while now, but we'll see how that goes, and I'll for sure update you on that. But I really like how unique this one felt. I like the pearlescence in there. It didn't enhance my texture in any way. Super easy to blend out and diffuse. It just sunk right into my skin as well, and it's still looking really nice and fresh. I, I liked it and I'm excited to try out the other shades and mix them like who the sets. For the eye things I went in with, these are far more easy to work with than I was expecting. I thought these for some reason were going to be a little bit dry to work with, but they are really easy and they pretty much just acted like a powder, which was really nice. They feel quite user-friendly for a liquid shadow. Um, I'm excited to continue using them and see how they wear on my eyes today, see if they crease at all but these feel quite promising and they were very impressive. These colors are also really pretty. I see myself using this shade all over the lid and layering one of the About Face pigments on it. That will be so pretty for like a more subtle but shiny look. I'll have to try that out. But yeah, impressed by these. Same with these, I really like the reflex in them. I like how they look chunky, but they don't enhance like my eyelids, so they don't make my eyelids look crepey. You know, like they look chunky, but they don't look chunky at the same time. They're a really pretty topper. I wanna see what it looks like just on my bare lid without layering it on top of something else. I think these will be very beautiful. And I also like how they have like a fun shift for kind of a more basic neutral shade. They have that green glitter in there, which makes it really fun and unique. I see myself reaching these time to time when I want that more glittery top coat looking look. <laughs> yeah, excited about them and I really like the packaging. Really stands out. For the mascara, I think my lashes look really, really nice. I think I'm just in a phase with the MAC Stack mascara right now. Like I said earlier, if I tried this one first, I think I would be so much more excited. But the effect is quite similar to the MAC Stack, but I just don't like how like a lot of product gets wasted when you shove the wand back into the tube. So that's my only complaint with this one. I really like the texture of this tube. It makes me want to chew it kind of. Yeah, yeah, that was exactly what I was hoping for. Very fun to do that. Undecided, I guess, about this one. I have confused feelings. We'll see after I test it out a bit more. And finally, for the lip liners, I am always open to welcoming in some new nice neutral lip liners and these felt very similarly to some of my favorites so I think these are going to fit into my life quite beautifully. So I really like them. They feel really nice. I really like the color that's around my border today. That was the shade Cradled. Ah, yeah, I feel like that might be coming with me to my birthday weekend. Yep, I'm gonna throw it in there right now so I don't forget. But I think 
that was all of the new things I tried out today, hopefully. But I think this video was quite the success. There was just a few little issues there, but overall, this came together beautifully. But that's going to be it for me today, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a like. It would help me out so very much. I'll of course link all of the products I used today or mentioned in the description down below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!